So you want to be able to make threaded parts like this. Nice little hex bolt here with some threads running down it and or a threaded hole to put something like this into. Now you don't have to do things like this just for visual looks in Onshape, but if you want to 3D print or otherwise machine these parts and make them into real parts, um, adding threads to your drawing are going to be um, kind of an essential part of that process. So how do we go about making threads? You're going to get to learn a new command. We're going to learn Helix today. But let me show you the process, because as you can see by the, the stack of um, sketches and extrusions and sweeps over here, it is not a one-step process. And so what I'm going to do is just go to sketch one. How did this start? Well, it started with a circle. That circle is going to be the solid base of your screw or bolt or whatever fastener you're trying to create. I then extruded that circle, the length of the shaft that I needed to work with. Now this is going to get modified a little bit, and I'll show you how in a, in a little bit here. Um, we're going to taper the bottom and add a hex head to the top. Uh, but once you've got that, now it's time for the new command. And here it is, helix. And when you start the helix, it's this command over here. It's going to want to know what face you plan on placing this helix on. So that's why we had to draw the cylinder first. So you can just click the face of your cylinder and then answer some questions. How do you want to control how this helix is going to spiral down that face. And so I'm going to control it with pitch because a lot of um, bolts are measured in pitch. Uh, you'll see a pitch of 1.25, 1.0, what have you. Um, in this case, I'm going to do a pitch, if you look down here, target pitch of 0.167 or 1 over 6. And the starting angle and the end condition of the height those things don't need to change. Those are just generic and default. You can tweak them if you want. You can change a bunch of stuff here, but I'm not going to. Just going to accept it. And then we're going to go take a look at sketch two. Now, how do we use that helix we just made? And that helix gets used as a path that we're going to tell our thread shape to sweep along. And so if I look at my thread shape, the requirements of the thread shape are this. You want this number here to be slightly smaller than the pitch of your helix. And so I've got a target pitch of 0.167 millimeters. It's 0.167 millimeters between each one of these curves. And by playing around in Onshape, I know that Onshape likes a fairly large, well, it feels like a fairly large gap for that number. Um, and if I do a 0.167, this is definitely not going to work. If I do a 0.16, it might work. Um, it really works best if you get down, you know, a 0.15, and that will sweep nicely. You then, oh, and also notice this piece. Um, if you look carefully at the threads of a bolt, they're not sharp and pointy. Uh, there is a flat surface. Um, and that helps with a little bit of a margin of error for the, the nut and the bolt to mesh together properly. And this is not standardized. This is fully adjustable. Um, I take it back. It is standardized. If you are using, if we go back here, um, if you're using some of these other options um, and, you're, and you're trying to meet an ISO or an ANSI standard. Uh, but for what we're doing right here, you're custom building these parts. This is for 3D printing or what have you. You get to set that number. So that's what I mean by it's not standardized. Um, I guess the same could be said for a lot of these other settings, um, but these are the settings that work really well. Um, so this dimension here, the 0.15, you want to make all three of these lines equal. You want to make them all the same length. And that's why I left the full triangle here and didn't just trim it off. It lets me use that equal constraint, and then the computer is happy with me. And so I can just add this line as where I really want the thread to stop, and then only work with this area and kind of ignore this tip. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to go to the sweep. And when I sweep, I select that area. So it says, What are you going to sweep? I pick that face. And what's your sweep path? And then I clicked on the curve that was made by the helix. And you can see it just 
goes right down through and creates a thread. At this point, you're almost done. Now it's just finishing touches. So what kind of finishing touches do you need? Think about usability. Um, look at this bottom edge. The thread spins right off the bolt itself. That's just going to fail when you 3D print it. And if it does work, there's going to be a lot of support material here. And then when you try to screw it into a part, um, this part's likely going to break off. So why don't we give this a nice taper so it's easy to insert into the hole and get um, spinning in the first place. So for that, I'm going to open up another sketch and just build a, a nice little taper angle here. So I found this bottom center and I started a line out from there and I measured so that I had some control over that angle. Um, I measured the angle and I measured a distance out to keep this line here out beyond the edge of the bolt. Uh, this dimension doesn't matter as long as it's out beyond the edge of the bolt. And this dimension here is up to you, depends on uh, what works best in your particular application. 30 degrees seems like it's going to work well for this demonstration. So I just drew this shape. And then I went to revolve. And I selected that shape. And I chose to remove it from the object that had the threads on. And so that's how I'm going to get that tapered bottom. And so now if there was a hole in a part, I could easily nestle this into the hole. And then as I start to spin it, the threads would catch and down it would go. Uh, the next thing I did was can't spin this if there's no way to grab it. So I built a little hex head on top. And so there's a sketch required. And there's my, my hexagon on top there. And also, again, notice the tail of the helix right here is just kind of flat. Um, that's not too sightly. It probably wouldn't create any problems, but why not have the threads go right up to the bottom of this hex head? So instead of taking this hex head and extruding it up, leaving that ugly spot, what I'm going to do is extrude it down into the thread. So we'll have a smooth transition. And so now if I go to my last extrusion, you can see I went down. And now if you look at how the threads transition into that head, it's a perfect transition. And so that's how you can create a, uh, a bolt with threads on it for 3D printing purposes. Now, if you want to do a hole, it's the same idea, but you would have a block. Um, let's sketch on the front again. And let's go ahead and extrude that a little bit. Maybe not quite that much. This whole thing is only, I think, three, so whoops. Three should be fine. Um, so you would have a block, you would have a hole here, and you would need to add a um, helix to that hole and then add a thread to it. And when you spun it, instead of adding, you would remove. Now, one thing to keep in mind, pay attention to where, I'm going to turn on the front plane here, um, where you build that thread. So my thread is on. It's hard to see, but it's right on that front plane because that front plane is going right straight through the middle of my circle. If I was doing this on a circle that was not on that front plane, I need to build a new plane. So if I just randomly put a circle over here, uh, oops, not my sketch, sketch, okay, circle. And I'm just going to drag it around. I'm going to put it over here in the corner. And then I'm going to extrude and remove and check. It looks good. And now if I want to build a, uh, a helix here, that's easy enough. So helix, grab the surface. And I'm going to go down here to my, uh, oh, it says um, input type turns. I'm going to change it to pitch again. And then do the one over six. So we're dealing with basically the same thing. So now I've got a helix running down in that hole. And now if I wanted to build my, um, my thread, what am I going to draw on? What's my drawing surface? Um, so there is nothing that's running perfectly through the center of that hole. So I would then need to put something out there. And you want to put it out where the tip of that helix is. And so I'm not even going to be able to run it this way in this case. So I'm going to do a new drawing plane. 
That drawing plane is going to be point normal. Sure, that should be fine. I want to find the end of that helix and then give it a normal direction. Um, I want my normal to go this way, I guess. And now I've got a plane that runs right through the tip of that helix and is ready to go. Although I'm not thrilled because the way that helix stopped, it didn't stop like over here where the point and the normal would line up. That's going to give me an object that's at a, a little bit of an angle. And I'm not really liking that. It almost feels like I should have run through this corner. Um, yeah, those are some things to think about as you're doing this. I'm going to finish this just so it doesn't take forever. But I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to sketch on that new plane. So new plane. And I'm going to put some lines that look like a triangle. So here, here, we'll run it vertical, run it up, run it down like that. I'm going to use the equal constraint, set this equal to this, and set this equal to this. So now I have an equilateral triangle at a dimension here that says it's point, whoops, 0.15. Put a line here that runs vertical and coincident edge to edge. Put a dimension here that gives me a 0.12. And then I'm going to make the end of this coincident with the end of the helix. And so now everything is black and happy. And now what I can do is um, spin this down through the helix as a remove option. Now, something to consider. 3D printers, if this is going to be 3D printed, um, when they're cutting something out, some of that plastic melts and kind of oozes into the removed area. So the actual 3D printed part will have an area that is not quite 0.15 um, worth of open area. Um, some of that plastic is going to squeeze in here. So this number ends up shrinking a bit. So in reality, when you're creating two 3D parts that have to mate together, you're going to want to play with this number a little bit because it should end up being a little bit bigger than the actual number you used over here on the thread. So that the thread is smaller than the hole it's trying to go into. And that will help the two fit together better. Likewise, with this other number here, this 0.12 that I'm using, if the thread stops way out here, but the hole had some plastic kind of ooze into it a little bit, maybe to this area, then these two things are not going to play very nice. So the hole should end up being a little bit bigger than the thread was. Um, so I can give you the example here. Maybe this is a 0.154. And maybe this is a, let's, go, let's do the same distance. Point uh, one two four, and so the hole is going to be just a little bit bigger than the actual uh, thread that's going into it. And so now we would just hit sweep, make a sweep. There we go. Grab our area, grab our path, make sure it's set to remove, and hit check. And so. All right, I might have put that a little too close to the edge since I just cut holes in the edge of my block all the way down through. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it. And if the threads don't go far enough on the bottom, it looks like they do. Well, maybe not. It looks like they might stop a little early. You can always um, put a, an extra height on your helix so the helix goes beyond the hole. So if I come back to my helix and it was just set to height here, um, I could say endpoint and then actually have like a line down here that I've indicated where it's going to end. Um, I don't have that right now, so I can't really do it, but it's a possibility. Um, likewise, if I um, did what I did and put that in the wrong place, I can come back to that sketch. I think it was that one. And that hole didn't even have any dimensions. I can just redrag it to a new location. And that's it. I've got a threaded hole that this bolt might actually slot right into. Okay, so that's how you're going to make threads uh, on a bolt and threads in a hole, which is perfect because I'm going to be asking you to do that very, very soon.